OK, so this gentleman has got a head and neck tumour and he's going to be undergoing chemoradiotherapy in the near future. So we're going to be placing a gastrostomy tube um, so that he can be getting his nutrition during his treatment when swallowing is going to become very, very difficult for him. And the type of tube we're going to place is a mini button gastrostomy and we're doing it as a primary procedure rather than as a delayed procedure once a tract is matured. Right, OK. So I'm just going to look at the position of the stomach which is just there, there's the tip of the NG tube, you can see the colon's outlined by barium, which you had the night before, makes it a bit easier to see. And um, we've got plenty of room there below the, down below the costal cartilage, this should that be fine, it should be fine. So what we're going to do now is just put some air into the stomach and distend it to make it easier to puncture. Okay, so prior to injecting the air, we've given some buscopan to decrease gastric and small bowel peristalsis, and it means we can distend the stomach a lot better. You can see we've got a nicely distended stomach, the optimal place for the gastrostomy is distal body, proximal antrum. So we're just going to aim for a position around about here, just to the left of the midline. I'm just going to feel on your skin. I'm just going to make some marks on your skin. So we're going to place one T fastener there, one T fastener there and one about there. So these are our gastropexy positions. Bit of a sting now. Injecting that nice and slowly. And once more. Just going a little bit deeper there now. Now we're going to swap for a longer syringe, a longer needle, and we're going to use some bupivacaine. Just going to check my position, check the air still there, and that's great. Same again. Just going to make three little skin nicks now for our gastropexy. So these are the cook tea fasteners we're going to use. So these are, have actually got a slidable holder on them, which you can slide by pressing on there, which releases the spring and allows you to slide this down. And the actual T-bar is held within the needle just at the end here. You'll see that deployed in just a moment. So we keep a syringe on the end. So a bit of pushing now, okay? So I'm just checking our position there. And the stomach has actually changed position a bit, so we're going to put some more air in now. And then we're going to carry on. We might need to reposition and put more local in. So we always check throughout the procedure that the stomach hasn't moved. You can see it's actually descended further below the, the, um, the costal margin compared to where it was when we started. Right, okay, that's fine with the air now. Bit of pushing. Okay, right, so I'm going to push the wire through, which will deploy the T-fastener in the stomach. I'm going to take that out, then I'm going to pull the T-fastener tight, and you'll see it moving the stomach, and slide that down until we get a little bit of tension, and that'll just hold the stomach in place. I'm just going to check my other two positions to check that they're still over the stomach. So there's one there and one there, so we'll end up with a gastrostomy position at the top end there, which will be fine. Right, second T fastener, please. Thank you. Okay, bit of pushing. And we've got air back, so we're in. We're then going to advance the wire. And that's deployed the T fastener. Held the stomach, and we're going to slide this down. And I might put my third T fastener in a different position now. I think what we're going to do is go over here because the stomach has moved. So I'm going to have some more local anaesthetic and we're going to change our position. So you've got to be prepared to adapt this as the stomach changes position. Okay, so, yeah. so more local anaesthetic, sharp scratch. It's going to make a small skin neck. And we'll go for our third T fastener. You can get away with two T-fasteners, but it's best uh, to get, you get a better gastropexy if you use three. 
we just check the position on screening and that'll be fine and we've got air back you can do that with lateral screening if you're not confident to put it in with AP and lateral screening does work very well for that we're going to pull the tea fastener tight and there we've got our three ready for the gastrostomy to go through the middle this is more lidocaine with bicarbonate and more anaesthetic through the middle sometimes get air back at that point but not on this occasion I'm just going to check our position one final time it shouldn't have changed because of the gastropexy and that's fine so I'm going to make a small incision for the gastrostomy tube and now we're going to go back in with one of the needles from our tea fastener you could use a Seldinger needle if need be check the position again check the angulation we need and that'll be fine and we've got air back there we're now going to put an Amplat super stiff guide wire in and pass that a good way into the stomach and you can see that there on the monitor coiled up in the fundus which isn't aerated at the moment we're now going to take the needle out and we're going to measure the length of our tract using an angioplasty balloon I'll show you how we do that so this is a six millimeter angioplasty balloon I'm just going to push that in over the wire into the stomach we're now going to inflate the balloon now it's in the stomach I'll just prove to you where that is so you can see it's well in the stomach inflate it we're going to pull it back keeping the wire in you can see it moving the NG tube and now it is snug on the inside of the gastric mucosa I'm going to fix the position on the skin with my fingers deflate the balloon and being careful with my hand not to slide I'm going to pull it back and I'm going to measure the distance between the first marker on the balloon and my fingers and that's the thickness of the anterior abdominal wall and the length of the tube we need and that's three centimeters so if in doubt I would go slightly longer but three centimeters looks fine so I'm going to reinflate the angioplasty balloon to start the track dilatation and you can see that there on the x-ray I'm now going to deflate the balloon and we're going to insert a 20 French plastic dilator to finish the dilatation off so the gastrostomy tube we're going to put in is 16 French but because of the balloon on the end of it you need a 20 French dilated tract to insert it so a little bit more pushing and you push and rotate and that's gone in very easily and you can see it there on screening we're going to leave that in place and we're going to get the gastrostomy tube ready so this is the little gastrostomy tube we're going to use, 16 French, 3 centimetres long, which we'll put a little bit of gel on it. We're going to put a dilator through the middle of it, just to stiffen it up and give it a little bit more rigidity when we're inserting it over the guide wire. Right, so there's a balloon on the end, so once we've got this into position, we're going to inflate this with 1 mil of contrast and 5 mils of water, which we have ready there. So a total volume is 6 mils. So we're just going to take that dilator out, and once that's out, we're going to put a little bit more air into the stomach. Okay, we're now going to push the tube in with a rotatory movement over the dilator. And that's the gastrostomy tube in place. Keeping forward pressure on it, I'm going to inflate the balloon. We're going to leave the dilator in because we know that's in the stomach. Take the wire out, check our position. And can we have some more air in please and we'll screen laterally. So we're going to take our lead screens back and we're going to look laterally and see if that balloon looks like it's in the stomach. So we need the lead screens back. Yeah, go on. Okay, and then drop the table down, please. And there you can see the tube placed within the stomach. So we're going to take some neat contrast and just inject it into the dilator and back into the tube and check that there's not a flap of mucosa or anything sitting over the top of that and you can see the contrast is falling free into the stomach so we know the balloon is not lying in the trap and you see by the way it moves it's in the right place if there was any doubt at all we could do a cone beam CT to check the position but I'm happy with that 
So just at the end here, I'm just going to take these little red bits off the gastropexy, which means they can't be compressed and inadvertently released. And these gastropexies stay in for the next 48 hours and don't need to stay any longer than that. And that's um, the mini gastrostomy in place.